Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. It sounds like something out of a tabloid or straight off an alien planet, thunder snow. Believe it or not, however, it is a real thing, and it's just as weird as it sounds. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have so many great explainers coming that you won't want to miss. Thunder snow is mystical and magical. It seems like an antithetical seasonal clash. The thunder and lightning we're used to in the summertime with the icy, numbing deep freeze that yields snow in the winter. It's rare, but it does happen, and understanding why and how it does makes the phenomenon all that much more special. Ordinary thunderstorms form from pockets of upward moving air. A parcel of air has to be less dense, usually warmer than its surroundings, to continue rising. We call this instability. We see tall, billowing updrafts in the warm season that tower to 30, 40, or even 50,000 feet. The anvil like clouds flatten when they hit the tropopause or the ceiling of the lower atmosphere. But in the wintertime, the tropopause is much lower, and storms rarely reach the heights needed for charge separation. Plus, it's just tough to find warm air that will rise. On rare occasions, you can get ordinary thunderstorms that form at temperatures below 32 degrees, resulting in completely snow. That usually happens along Arctic cold fronts. On February 11, 2003, the National Weather Service in Lincoln, Illinois, issued several severe thunderstorm warnings for thundersnow squalls that produced winds topping 60 miles per hour. Thundersnow squalls also periodically occur in the Rockies, and thundersnow is common in lake effect snow bands off Lakes Erie and Ontario. However, you can also get thundersnow from something called conditional symmetric instability. That sounds like a mouthful, but let's break it down for you. Imagine we could see density in the atmosphere. It would look like a bunch of layers stacked atop each other. Density is greatest near the surface. In the presence of a large storm system, these surfaces tilt because there is missing air from the center of low pressure. Now imagine a pocket of air is sloshing around low pressure, but it has a little extra momentum. It would actually slide up that density surface horizontally and ascend. That means it would take a diagonal path. Let's think about that coin rotary at the mall. The vortex in the middle represents the center of low pressure. If we put a penny in, it'll spiral gradually closer to the middle before falling into our low. Now pretend the coin is going around and around and suddenly speeds up. It would actually start spiraling upwards and outwards and taking a diagonal path up that surface. That's exactly how conditional symmetric instability works. We can get slantwise thunderstorms. Here's a cross-section through a snowstorm in the 90s that produced slantwise convection. Notice the shallow convective towers, i.e. thunderstorms. Now we need to talk about the actual lightning. Through a process called triboelectrification, ordinarily we see water droplets become negatively charged and ice take on a positive charge when they rub against each other with friction. Here, however, we've only got snow or grapple akin to ice pellets. In 1994, Japanese researchers Kitagawa and Michimoto published a paper outlining a tripolar electric field in wintertime thunderclouds that produced lightning. The lower positive charge played a crucial role. It's most present in the layer of atmosphere with temperatures between 16 and 32 degrees. Because cloud bases in the wintertime are so low, it's easy for tall man-made objects to help focus that charge enough to want to trigger a lightning strike. But as a charge starts to build around a pointed object, the air becomes ionized and an opposing space charge begins to wrap around it. That often prevents it from being struck. If the wind is strong enough, however, it can blow that shield charge away and allow something to be struck. Usually the wind should be about 20 or 25 miles per hour. That played a role in allowing skyscrapers to be struck during the February 1st, 2011 blizzard in Chicago. The same is true with wind turbines. Their blades are great at triggering thundersnow, especially if they're spinning. Of course, you can still have thundersnow without any man-made objects. Wintertime lightning can also happen inside the clouds without striking the ground. On January 4th, 2018, at least 30 pulses of electricity were recorded in an otherwise quiet, snowy area of Montville, Connecticut, just northwest of rural Lake Conemock. A major winter storm was bringing feet of snow at the time. Now, why that rural area of Montville, Connecticut? Well, there are two TV and radio transmission towers in nearby Oakdale that soar some 316 and 367 meters into the sky. That's between 1,037 and 1,204 feet. At the time, I spoke with a woman at a nearby limousine store called Livery Limited who told me the towers were struck at least five times in the heavy snow. Other towers across the New England were also struck that day. On December 29, 2016, lightning struck the Prudential Tower in Boston, Massachusetts during a major thundersnow event, and the same area saw a barrage of thundersnow on February 9, 2017. I got to experience some of that firsthand while on the rooftop of my college in Boston. 
Conditional symmetric instability is most common on the northwest side of low-pressure systems, especially those quickly intensifying and undergoing bombogenesis. You usually get them in the wraparound comma head. That's partly because cold air is sweeping in from the northwest quite quickly. Once in a great while, you might see a flash of lightning during an episode of thunder snow, but it's tough to hear the thunder. That's because snow is actually an acoustic suppressor, so you kind of have to be beneath the lightning to hear that thunder. Thunder snow is just as dangerous as lightning during an ordinary thunderstorm. You do not want to be outside during it. It's especially hazardous to skiers. On January 25th, 1990, a lightning bolt produced by thunder snow struck a utility pole in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That charge injured 11 people shoveling or pushing nearby stranded motorists. All told, however, thunder snow is beautiful scientifically and aesthetically. If you're inside safely enjoying the snow and happen to hear a rumble, count your lucky stars. It may just be thunder snow. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.